welcome back to part two of our collection series. Okay, let's go. Okay, so as you can see, we're doing foundations today because I have several. So, this is what we're working with. So I forgot to count how many primers and setting sprays that we had. There are 28 foundations here. That is an insane amount of foundations for one person. I know it's not the biggest collection of foundations, but it is definitely pretty large. Um, pretty large. So let's go ahead and push these off to the side and get grabbing. We're here with Bean. He's here to assist. We had a runaway foundation, but I did catch it. So we're gonna start with that one since it tried to get away from me. I'm out of breath because I literally just ran. Foundation that tried to run away from me is my lightest coverage. Foundation, this is the Winky Lux White Tea Tinted Veil. I have mine in the shade of Fair Tint. This product is very, very, very light coverage. The packaging looks white, I think, on camera, but it's like a very soft baby pink. This product is not for those of you who really like a full coverage or medium coverage foundation. This is such a light coverage. It really is a tint, fair tint. It really is a tint. It is so light. With that being said, I do like this for an everyday kind of foundation look. Um, if I'm like in a hurry in the morning or I don't want something that's too heavy, this is a really good option. I don't use it all that much because it is such a light coverage, but it is really nice for every day or like quick makeup, no makeup makeup, this is a really good option. So if you wanna wear something, but you don't want it to look like you're wearing anything, this is a really good option. Then we have the Maybelline Dream Radiant Liquid in the shade two, Fair Porcelain. I do like it, but it doesn't wow me. And that's how I feel about several of these foundations. This one, in my opinion, is very similar to the L'Oreal Infallible um, Freshwear. Mine is in the shade 400. I don't think there's like an actual name. I think it's just 400, but in my opinion, these are very, very, very similar. They give similar finishes or um, coverage. This one is definitely more of like a natural finish. This one's more matte, in my opinion, but they're so similar. I don't think people need both, in my opinion. This one seems to be more favored on the internet than this one, but I kind of like them both the same. This, I believe, was supposed to replace this. And I love this. This is the Maybelline Dream Liquid Mousse in the shade 10 Porcelain Ivory. This is obviously a new one. I haven't opened this one. I had a whole bottle of this that I used up. It was like absolute favorite of mine for a long time. I love this. I believe that product that I just showed you was supposed to replace this. In my opinion, they are not the same at all. I wish this would make a comeback. This is beautiful. I love the finish of this. I love the way it sits on my skin. It's beautiful. It's more of like a medium to full. I'm personally have like a medium, medium full kind of foundation gal myself, but still pretty. Um, I do like this. Like I said, I wish it, I wish it would come back. Let's go to some more foundations that are just like me before I get into ones that I like love. So another me foundation for me is the L'Oreal True Match Lumi. This one is in the shade. W12 Porcelain Light Ivory. I do like this a lot better than I like the original True Match. I was not a huge fan of the True Match, but I do like this one. So if you have dry skin like me and you did not like the True Match, you might love the True Match Lumi. It does give a luminous finish. It has a nice radiant finish, but I don't love this. Again, it's kind of more like a meh foundation for me. It's not bad but it's also not my favorite that I've ever tried. It's kind of just average in there for me, but you know, it's still a nice foundation. I still wear it, but if I were to like run out, would I go out and buy this again? 
probably not, but you know, it is nice and I do wear it, so I do keep it around, but that's kind of my thoughts on that. These are the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundations. These are both in the shade Porcelain. This one is the original and this is the Dewy. I personally think these are like the exact same thing. <laughs> I know that this is supposed to be like a dewy finish and this one's supposed to be a little more like a normal to matte finish, but I personally can't really tell a huge difference between the two. This one just has a slight dew to it. It is so slight that I don't even know if anybody would really notice. They smell like house paint in my opinion. I don't love the smell of either of these. But it's all right. I actually decluttered the original before and I went out and repurchased it um, because I bought this one and wanted to compare. That's my opinion. They're pretty much identical. Um, they're not bad, but again, they're not like my absolute favorites. So that's kind of, you know, that's kind of like that. They're, they're not bad, but they're not my favorite. They do give a pretty decent amount of coverage. I do like the way they look on camera a lot more than I like the way they look in person. So this is a very good, like, in front of the camera type of foundation. Only a few more mids until I get into some that have different opinions. This is the Milani Screen Queen. This is in the shade 140 Nude Ivory. I am only putting this in my mid section because I, I don't think to wear this. There's nothing wrong with this foundation. It does have a natural finish. You know, I love that. I just don't reach for it all that much. I am going through my entire makeup collection now and trying things and um, working on getting rid of some things that I just don't love or I need to try again or try more. So this is a definitely a product that I'm keeping around to just try more to see what I think. But it's all right. But again, it doesn't wow me. I just need to try it some more, I personally think. This foundation I love. This is the Milani Conceal and Perfect 2-in-1 Light Natural. I wore this to both of my proms and it lasted all night. If you want a foundation that will last, this is the one for you. This will last everything. Everything, everything, huh, everything. <laughs> It'll last everything. It is lovely. Now, I don't wear this one like every day because it is pretty heavy on my dry skin. So if you have dry skin, it is fairly heavy. I don't love that about it, but this will last and it gives a nice like natural, I would say natural matte type of finish. It's not too dewy, but it's not too matte. I would say it's right in the middle, but it leans a little bit more matte. So natural matte in my opinion. But this was hyped about for a long, long time. I do not like the concealer of this whatsoever, but I love the foundation. So if you didn't like the found or that you didn't like the concealer, the foundation, I really like. This is the L'Oreal Infallible Total Cover. Mine's in the shade 301 Classic Ivory. I really like this. It's full coverage and natural finish. I agree with the natural finish. It's very, very lovely. I love wearing this and I love that it's in a squeezy tube. I really like this. I like the way this one sits on my skin a lot more than the infallible, what is it called? Fresh wear? Yeah, I like the way this one sits on my skin a lot more, but this one definitely has higher coverage and definitely is more of a natural finish. Then I have two more L'Oreal ones. I think these are the last two from L'Oreal. I have the Infallible Pro Glow in the shade 202 Creamy Natural, and then Infallible Pro Matte in the shade 99 True Porcelain. I love both of these. They both work on my dry skin, which is not that common, I think, um, but I do really like both of these. This one definitely does have more of a glow, hence Pro Glow, but Pro Matte is more of like a natural matte. It's not a flat matte. I don't love flat matte foundations, but this one is not a flat matte. I would say it's very close to a satin matte, natural matte type of finish. This is very glowy, um, but it's not overly glowy. Um, it's not like this type of glowy. I'll get to that in a second, but it's a little less than that. So if you didn't love how, much, how glowy this is, this is a really good option. They both have really good coverage. And I love that L'Oreal Foundations do this. I think other brands do it too, but I don't think any of the ones that I have here today do this other than L'Oreal that give you what the claims are on the back. It is so helpful <laughs> when you're shopping in store, when you're looking through your collection, when you're trying to figure out what you're going to wear. 
I love that. And I love both of these as well. I need to use these a lot more. Oh, it's a demi mat. That's what it says. Demi mat. That's 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 more. That's that explains better. Go ahead and talk about this. This is the Sephora Clean Glowing Skin Foundation. I have it in the shade one. Sephora sent me this, and I love it. This is a great product. It is very glowy. So if you have oily skin, you may not love this. I have used this for quite a while and I love it. I think it is stunning. I love the way it looks. It lasts a really good time. It, like I said, is glowy. So my dry skin loves this. It's a natural, more like coverage, medium coverage. I love it. I'm starting to get tongue tied on what my words are, but I love this. <laughs> oh, I keep saying that. Okay. I like both of these a lot too. These are the Revlon Candids. They're both in the shade 110. This is the original and this is the glow. I love this whole candid line. I just think it is beautiful. Again, both of these are very similar, but this one does offer a little bit more of a glow, hence the name. I like both of these. They both work beautiful on me. I would say this is very similar to the, um, it's not as matte, but it's very similar to the Infallible Matte by L'Oreal. It's not as matte as this one, so if this was too matte for you, but you don't want something so glowy, this is a really good option. And I love the way it looks on my skin, and then the Candid Glow is just stunning. It looks beautiful no matter what I wear it with. It's beautiful. Like I said, I'm a big fan of this whole line. So. Those are my two Revlons. I don't think I have anything else Revlon to talk about today. Okay. Then we have two of these. These are the same foundation in two different shades. This is the NYX Total Control Drop Foundation. I have Alabaster and Porcelain. I talked about this a little bit in my primer and setting spray portion of my collection. These are beautiful. They are matte. So if you have dry skin like myself, you will need to use a moisturizing primer with these. Um, they're very matte, but they have beautiful coverage. Beautiful coverage. I love the coverage on this. I use mine with a sponge. I will not use this with a brush, in my opinion, being dry. It's too much. But if you use it with a moisturizing um primer and then go in with a sponge it's beautiful so if you have dry skin but you still want a matte finish this is a beautiful option it's definitely probably i would say the mattest foundation that i own well maybe not maybe this one is this is the mark jacobs remarkable foundation this is in the shade ivory light this is not available anymore but this is a beautiful foundation i want mark jacobs beauty to come back so bad i loved their products and I love the shape, like the pill shape. I don't know. It's just, I love, it's so aesthetically pleasing to me. But I love this foundation. This may be the, the mattest foundation that I have, but this, the closest one that I have to this in my collection would be the NYX Total Drop. Um, so if you wanted this or if you had this and you ran out, I'm not saying they're dupes by any means, but one that is similar would be the NYX one that I just showed you. But I do love this. Then we have both of the Maybelline Fit Me. So I have the um, Matte and Poreless in the shade 110 Porcelain and then the Dewy and Smooth in the shade 110 Porcelain as well. I like both of these. This is not a flat matte at all. This is definitely more like a, a I wouldn't even say demi matte. It's fair. It's, it's maybe a satin matte. I mean, it's, it's not super mattifying by any means, but if you have a little bit more of an oily skin tone or skin tone, skin type or normal, I would say more normal. You probably love this. I do like this one. This is actually the foundation that I'm wearing today, the dewy and smooth. Um, but I've used several of these bottles up and I keep repurchasing it, but I don't think I'm going to repurchase another one. It's, it's nice, but I feel like as I've gotten older, I like this product less and less. And I don't know why that is because I still have dry skin. These, again, are the same foundation, different shades. This is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Hydrating Tint. I have the shade Classic Ivory 10 and Natural Ivory 20. I do like this product, but... I don't know if it's my favorite tint anymore. This, I think, is a nice meet in the middle between the Winky Luxe tint and then like a light coverage foundation. 
this is a lice, a lice, a <laughs> nice meat in the middle foundation. It gives a nice dewy like, uh, maybe not dewy is the right word, maybe natural. I think natural finish is the nice word. Um, hydrating tint. Uh, I wouldn't say it's super hydrating, but I do like it. I like the doe foot. Um, this foundation I've had in my collection for a long time. I've, I've bought, I think, two of these maybe. Um, and I do like it. And Noki likes it as well. I had knocked these out. These are the only multiple branders I have. So I have the Do You in the shade Porcelain and then the Born This Way in the shade Swan. Out of the two of these, I prefer the Born This Way. I love this foundation. It's one of my all time favorites. This is beautiful, but it is dewy. It definitely has the appropriate name. It's dewy. I believe this foundation has been discontinued, um, which is a shame because it's beautiful. It does have that extreme dewiness, so if you don't like dew, you probably won't like this. And it is slightly too dark for me in this shade. I wish it was a little bit lighter, but I love both of these. Again, the Born This Way, I cannot rave about this enough. This is a classic for a good reason. I love the finish on this. It's full coverage, natural finish. I love it. Then we have the Merle Norman CC Cream in the shade Light Ivory. I love this. This is actually my third one of these. I think this is actually a brand new bottle. I haven't even opened this one yet. I love this. This is a beautiful thing to wear just every day, you know, out and about type of product. This is one of the only like foundation like products that I have that I don't have to set with powder. I still do set with powder nine times out of 10 just because I don't love a sticky base and I think it helps makeup last a lot longer, but I don't have to do that with this product but I do really enjoy this. I cannot recommend this enough. If you're wanting to try something from the brand, this is a lovely product. I don't know if they expanded their shade range though, which they should have, hopefully, hopefully. And then we're getting down to my three, another three of my favorites, I guess, because the Born This Way is one of them. This is the Beauty Bakery Insta Bake. I have mine in the shade 357WN. I saw Beauty Bakery's announcer, announce, announcement on this. They're not gonna be making this anymore. And that devastates me. And Bean as well. Devastates me. This is a beautiful foundation. I do understand why they're going to stop making this, but I wish they didn't have to. It's beautiful, I love this. I love the foundation a lot more than I like the concealer. I do like the concealer, but I like this a lot more than that, but they're not gonna make it anymore, which makes me so sad. This is the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation in the shade Mont Blanc. I love this. This, the Too Faced, and the one I'm gonna talk about next are my favorite foundations ever, ever. This is my number one foundation of all time. This is my favorite one. I. I need to try more NARS foundations because this one is just beautiful. It's stunning. It looks good every single time I wear it. Every single time I wear it, this product looks fantastic. It doesn't matter what I put under it, what I put over it. It looks great. It plays nice with all of the friends. I love it. And then finally, we have this product, which I love and adore. This is the Fenty Beauty Ease Drop Blurring Skin Tint in the shade two. I love this. I know it's technically a tint, but I think this has really good coverage for a tint. I love this product. It looks fantastic on my skin. This is another one of those products that look good every single time I wear it. This has the lightest coverage out of my top favorites. This one probably has like the next amount of coverage and then the Too Faced probably has the most coverage. These three for me, you can see the colors there. This is my holy trinity of foundations. These just look beautiful on my skin. Every single time I wear them, every single product I use with them, they just look fantastic. These are my go-tos right here. And I hate that they're all high-end, 
but in my personal experience, I think high end kills it in the foundation game. Now, drugstore foundations are great too, but these three are my top three favorites of all time. Truthfully, if I only had the, these six foundations, I would be set. I would be set. I mean, I don't really need more than six, but I love all of them. That is all of our foundations. <sighs> it's not as long as primers and setting sprays, I don't think, but there, I think there's less products here. Maybe there's not, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, that's all of my foundations. I have videos where I'm using all of these products, I believe at least once on my channel. You can just look, or if you have a request, you can leave it down below or send it to me on social media. But that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.